Hello viewers and welcome to my channel. Uh, in today's uh, class, we'll learn uh, the basics of uh, Zardozi. This is very useful uh, tutorial for beginners. I have so many videos in my channel and I had many comments asking me to make a tutorial on this uh, embroidery. So for this you will require an embroidery ring and you will uh, get this in two varieties. Earlier this was very common the wooden ring and now uh, you get this plastic rings. So the wooden ring has this screw but this tends to get rusted and uh, it's not very smooth. It's not very tight while uh, you tighten this ring. So you can prefer to use this plastic ring but if you're comfortable with this and been using this for a long time then you can uh, stick to this. This plastic ring, uh, it's easy to use the screw here and this is 18 centimeters. So when you're a beginner, don't use big ring, prefer using a smaller size ring because when you use the fabric and you start the embroidery, uh, the fabric will tend to get some wrinkles. So use a smaller ring for your practice initially. Coming to the fabric, the fabric is the most important part when you're a beginner and you're learning this embroidery. You will find variety of fabrics in the market like uh, jeans, denim, thick fabrics, um, cotton, polyester, chiffon, nylon, so many net kind of. When you are a beginner, prefer using a cheaper fabric because you are going to use it for practice and uh, use something like polyester or nylon because when you use uh, cotton fabrics, don't use too thick fabrics because since the needle is very thin and uh, you will have difficulty that the thread will start coming out and don't use uh, very thin chiffon fabrics because it will create a lot of holes in the fabric and you will tend to tear it so use a medium thickness fabric uh, nylon or the polyester one which is cheap so even if it gets spoiled the fabric no problem use a medium thickness fabric so let us uh, tighten this ring keep the bigger size of the ring pair below the fabric and then put the other ring onto it like this so I think I need to loosen the ring a little because it's too tight and when placing the fabric see that there are no wrinkles formed in the ring and after you put this it still has to be loosened gets into the ring Start tightening it. So you can see this screw, it's very user friendly, doesn't even get rusted. So, this is how you tighten it, and then when it's not very tight in between, start pulling the fabric. So, to avoid this formation of wrinkles it has to be completely tight and i'll show you how it's done tighten it more this is the most important part when you're doing embroidery that the ring should be very tight this is how you pull don't stretch the fabric too much So pull it, hold the ring and pull it and then this is how you check how tight the fabric is and you can see here it's quite loose when you are 
finger you press and it goes down the fabric it is loose it's supposed to be completely tight so you pull the fabric slowly just avoid all this wrinkle formation see that the fabric is tight and then again tighten this ring once it's completely tight then only you can start your embroidery this is the zardozi needle this is also called a ari a a r i or a tambur t a m b o u r needle and you can find this online this is also i think called a crochet needle but this measurement is 0.5 mm so it's so tiny the hook over here it's 0.5 mm and this needle uh, we used to get it first in wood wooden needle but this is very uh, user friendly the steel needle it has a good grip also and uh, it's very durable so this is a tambur or a ari needle it is also called a zardozi needle 0.5 mm I'll be using this zari thread uh, when you're new to this embroidery use a thick zari thread preferably and after you practice you can use silk thread which is thinner so when you are practicing there will be tendency for the thread to break each time you do a stitch so you will find this online zari threads z a r i zari threads are normally thicker than the normal threads so this thread i have made a knot here and hold the thread like this with your fingers the needle hook will be facing your end will be facing you the hook side and this needle has a good grip so i'll be holding it like this your thumb on it like this okay my two fingers pressed and my middle finger on this so place this thread below and start practicing with a straight line so prick the fabric the hook should be facing you and here you hold the thread like this towards the fabric pull it with the hook initially you will face lot of difficulty when you are new you will not get the grip or the judgment of the hook on how much to pull and the placement of the thread but you can see i have continuously been placing my two fingers here and the needle i am holding it in this manner so take bigger chain stitches when you are a beginner big ones press it prick it and again pull the thread with the needle this is how it's done when you are a beginner you will not be able to do this so quickly so take bigger stitches pull it pull it 
and then turn it this is how it sometimes slips you get a complete hold on the fabric and the thread prick it this is how it's done prick it let the hook be facing you pull the thread upward and then you turn the hook turn it prick it pull it and turn the hook so the same chain stitch this you have to practice for a long time once you get a good hold on the thread and the needle then you can learn other stitches this is a basic chain stitch so now i'll take a small stitch here you know, a very tiny one so it gets a knot here kind of knot because i've taken such a small stitch i'll go closer to the same stitch and now this where it gets worsen i am making the chain stitch in the other direction so i will turn the ring let the chain stitch let the direction of the stitch face towards you so it becomes easier like this and once you start practicing then you can decrease the size of the stitch like you can see here you can go a little smaller you want to put a knot make it smaller extremely small here go took a small one i'm just taking it so smoothly but initially you will face this problem that you will pull even the uh, threads of the fabric and it's really frustrating when you're practicing so the thread also will break the zuri thread but the more you practice you become perfect and then you can add beads sequins katdana and tubes into this thread that gives very different look this is how you make a knot get the needle here and face the hook towards you rotate this thread two times roll i mean move it twice on the needle and you pull it so i'll turn the ring now you can see this this is what i'm supposed to pull behind to make a knot so you can see here this end is of the thread make the loop a little bigger and then you put this reel into this loop get it out and here's how you create a knot be very careful now pull it 
that you don't entangle the thread so a knot is created here i'll make it stronger by putting one more knot just a normal made another round and this has to be pulled till here place your finger here and pull the thread do this two three times so you get a firm stronger knot here you get a have a knot make a loop like this round one put the reel in between and pull it like this here place your finger on this and gently pull the thread so you make doubly sure that knot is strong this is the back side you can see how neat it is this is tubes or cut dana c u t d a n a they are like small tubes which can be used and this is sequence you can use beads and pearls wooden beads kundan they are all names of the embroidery materials this is how you pick one cut dana like this you can pick two simultaneously if it fits like this so i'll start the chain stitch from here get a hold of the thread zor and slide this into it this is how it's done and the drop one more pull it pull the thread from behind drop another pull sufficient length of thread drop the cut dana and then one more stitch after practicing you will become perfect you will get a proper estimate of where to place your fingers how to pull the thread it's only practice that is important so i'll make a, some more chain stitch and drop on a sequence pull the thread from behind and then one stitch one more sequence this is how, in the same manner how beads are stitched in embroidery just one stitch and you can use so many variations just need to master that one chain stitch and you can make nice designs for your clothing this is how it looks from behind this is how you have to place your thumb and your index finger you 
you just need to leave the thread loose not hold it tight and keep practicing Not here. Okay, make a small stitch and pull the thread. Pick this fabric near close by this stitch, face the hook towards you, and two rounds of thread around the needle pull it pull it let's see the back side pull this and you can see this this is the thread when i pull this thread it becomes smaller so i will put the reel into this Be very careful not to entangle the thread. This is what happens. So use the needle and pull. Place your finger over here and pull the thread. So here you get a knot. We'll make one more knot, one round, and then. Push the reel inside. Hold your index finger and pull it. I'll make another one. So that the stitch doesn't come out. So here's a simple video on the basics to learn Zardozi Ari work. You can check my other videos on uh, macro view of the chain stitch and uh, where I have used some springs This is called, that is called Dabka work. You can check all my embroidery videos. I have very good designs which I have done on my clothing, on my dresses, in your traditional wear. You can check my other videos. If you like this video, don't forget to share it and subscribe to my channel and hit the like button.